Echo is an important character. A close-up of her eyes, with absolutely no expression on her face. She's changing Marvel. And we synchronize! I'm Mensa Anti-Nitroglycerin. And it's for the best. I can't believe this series isn't more popular. This show is incredibly inclusive. Even includes people who can't act. She's the main character. No wonder she thinks including everyone's important. That way you can lower your standards and get a job. Echo, where she fights a really intelligent crime boss. I suspect you've come to kill me. And what gives you that idea, mate? What is it about this scene that could possibly have tipped you off? This is a woman of strength. What was that? Stealth. You're using a drill through a metal floor. You're the one who's supposed to be deaf, not the enemies. Oh, look at me, I'm so stealthy. A six inches of drill bit sticks through the floor. If anyone was in that room, the only thing that camera's telling you is you've been spotted. And obviously, anyone that good at stealth is also renowned for their subtlety. And all these lead to one of the most powerful women alive, as she can do what everyone should do. Embrace the sisterhood. Oh yeah, and the granny starts to beat up grown men. This story's horrific, but apparently it's authentic both in front of and behind the camera, so you know, who am I to judge? This is an indigenous story told the right way. Now they too can see themselves in psychopathic murderers. Marvel telling us what they think of people one group at a time. I can't wait to hear what Disney think of dwarfs. Well, whatever it is, it's probably not gonna be that big a deal. Episode two starts in 1200 AD. We got rather complex fortifications in Alabama. From what I hear, not much has changed with the most stupid sport of all time. We've got women and men competing in the same sport at the same time, and they do this. Guy just tackles him to the ground. If you can literally just shoulder barge someone to the floor. I don't know, I just think half the population would have an insurmountable advantage. And what gives me that idea? <laughs> so when you see this square up, it's laughable. And she's like, oh, I've got you all. Despite the fact that she can barely run. Either way, they compete. Whoever loses gets kicked out of the tribe. And she saves the day, standing up to the evil patriarchy, who's at least a foot and a half taller than her. The tree people save her. She gets those glowing hands. And then we find out what her superpower is. She can pick a ball up off the floor. Yeah, now my descendants will be able to pick up their husband's sandwich when they drop it. So Echo meets up with Biscuits, who is basically a nice guy that she's just going to abuse and take advantage of for the rest of the series. She doesn't value him at all. What she values is what he can do for her, because she's a psychopath. He buys her all the stuff she wants. You ever take this off-roading? I'd love you to destroy your entire car for me. He's like, no, I can't do that. My gran would kill me. It's her car. Not that the evil cow cares. Instead, she's like, oh, I know you bought me all this stuff, but I want you to buy me even more. I would go in myself because I could. There's nothing stopping me going into town. But I'm a lazy bin, so you can do it for me. I know you will. That way I can just take advantage of you. He asks if it's illegal, because why would you go to prison for her? She just shows him a load of money, roping him into criminal activity. At this point, he should phone the police. Next up, we get an entire scene that's only there for one reason. Mini Moon, come chatter. Mm. He's like, oh, this is actually... An American pot that you've never seen a pot in America before. Talking to the wind, symbolizing the harmony with Mother Earth. Yeah, that guy's insane, by the way. Mother Earth. <laughs> and somebody in that room needs to shower. The aesthetic of our casita is a little more... Southwesty? The tourists who don't care about them. They only care about the stereotype, the bigots. Yeah, that's the point of this scene. Nothing else happens in it. Do you have any of those Navajo rugs? They have all the uh, ethnically ambiguous schmutty. He has a mighty big chip on his shoulder for someone that's trying to sell somebody a pot. We see him fixing things because he's clearly a mechanical genius. Back to a family now for a gripping scene that'll really keep you on the edge of your seat. Where should we set the speakers to get the best sound for the drums? I don't know, love. I just know I don't care. Now this booth here is the prime spot. Need you have it for your beats. The most unbelievable part of this scene is that she eats vegetables. So he arrives back with Echo, who promptly takes advantage of him. He's like, let's go for a ride. You don't need to eat. You can eat at any time. Now I need you and you do what I say. Peasant. He's not a friend to her. He's a tool. Now, just when you think that Echo can't become any more insufferable than she already is, it's going to get a lot worse. He's like, what are we doing here? She installs a tracker on his phone and then just goes, track me. 
At no point asks us permission. These are commands. Follow. Be like, no, I've got stuff to do, you silly bid. I don't know if you've noticed, but my life doesn't revolve around yours. Want to murder people? You can do it on your own time. And then without telling him what is about to happen, she just stands on the edge of the bridge. <laughs> And jumps off. I mean, look, I was hoping for defenestration, but I will take jumping off a bridge. If it means we can end this in episode two, congratulations, love. Most entertaining part of the episode. Whoa, 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 whoa. Although he did panic because he didn't know what she was doing. She seems a bit evil to me. Although it does fit in with the rest of her. Either way, she swings on top of a train. Again, almost ended excellently, but unfortunately she grabs on. Also, just in case you don't know what being deaf is, and you actually lived your entire life unable to put yourself into somebody else's shoes without actually having to experience it yourself, like most of Hollywood, they do give you a little taste of what Echo has to put up with. Yeah, they cut the sound from the show again for no reason whatsoever. Just to take any tension out of the scene. It's a really brave choice. Either way, Echo crosses the train, goes underneath it, hanging from the underside of the carriage until she finds the one she wants, hooks on and comes up with a baldric level of cunning plan on how to check the carriage is safe for entry. <laughs> That's meant to be subtle. That could have gone through a guy's foot. It's also metal drilling through metal. You're the one who's supposed to be deaf, not the security guards. Hey Dave, can you hear that high-pitched grinding noise? Yeah mate, there seems to be a drill bit sticking up out of the floor. <laughs> Although she does follow it with a camera. Which has a flashing LED on the top of it. The only thing that's gonna see is how many security guards you alerted because you forgot sound existed. She gets very lucky that actually it's just unguarded. That's the only way any of her plan could have possibly worked. Either way, she continues to drill through the floor and opens one of the boxes. The train swerves off the tracks. Hold on. And without a second thought, he decides to follow her cross country and destroy a car that isn't his just because she commanded him to. I mean, she is an evil piece of work, but he is also an incredibly insufferable, easily walked over, pathetic excuse for a man. What should he do? Should he just let her die? Yes. After the way she treated him, yes. The issue is, as she's escaping the train, she's also an idiot. <laughs> Yeah, she can't even jump a tiny little gap. And even though she makes it onto the train, we then get more stupidity layered on top of the previous ignorance. <laughs> oh, aren't you really clever, love? It's a good job it wasn't your other leg. Otherwise, you'd be walking around on a pair of matchsticks. Now, the weird thing about this is, despite the fact that she only got stuck in the first place because the train carriages were moving backwards and forwards, and no point now were they moving backwards and forwards. <laughs> Yeah, love, just push on it a bit. That'll work. I would like to point out her leg does come off. If anything, this is the perfect situation for her because her leg comes off. If that was me, I'd be in way more trouble. Luckily, though, her ancestor can play sport for a bit badly. Oh, I picked up a ball. This will come in useful. Oh, yes, oh. I shall give you the power to pick up sandwiches and to run badly. We get another scene of Eve destroying paradise by drinking from the magical power water of the Swiss roll, followed by the most stupid part of episode two. I can push trains apart. You do realize there's a mechanism on trains specifically to pull that out. You don't have to actually forcefully break the metal on the train. But no, I've got super strength. Now I can pick up really heavy sandwiches off the floor and I glow in the dark. Which isn't particularly useful when you're trying to stealth actually. <laughs> So Echo decides to come up with the incredible plan of sitting on the back of the train <laughs> and sticking a spanner into the wheel base of the train. If you think a spanner can act as a brake pad for a train, you're the spanner. But the sparks allow him to see the train. Jesus Christ, he's way over there! Congratulations, Captain Obvious. And he continues to go even more cross country to destroy his car. <laughs> And she's like, oh, just drive closer, go faster, just match the speed of a train across gravel. Because I have no concept about reality, I just kind of do things. They only work out because I'm American with one leg and can sign. The fallopian tubes help as well. Of course, because he's, you know, got at least a little bit of testosterone in his body, he's like, you're an idiot, look ahead. <laughs> She wants him to drive into the side of a freaking tunnel. Oh, just go faster, it'll be fine. I'll get squashed, love. So she eventually decides I should probably jump. <laughs> And look, all I'm saying, as you can tell from that distance, she'll never make it. Again, they forgot how physics works. You've got two objects moving at the same speed, so essentially the distance is fixed. But they're like, oh, the car's going forward, so she'll be able to jump further. 
You almost died! Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not that lucky. You almost died! Why are you signing at her? She knows! Billy Jack, you okay, boy? Grandma's gonna kill me. Yeah, my grandma's gonna kill me. I just go through life being used and abused by one random woman after another. <laughs> then we find out what her plan was. They start opening up the boxes from the train. They see she's left a little present. And it's just a shame Echo wasn't trapped inside, really, because that explosion keeps going for a long time throughout that building. <laughs> Kingpin's shipping building, which is weird, because at this point, she thinks he's dead. I'm gonna dismantle his empire! I mean, you already did, love. You killed him, as far as you're aware. Now, of course, no one at the shipping business knows what went on, although he puts it together himself. Crap rolls downhill, it won't land on you. If it's rolling downhill, it won't land on anybody. Land implies falling. Besides, if it's gonna land on anyone, you know Echo did it. Blame her! Hey, look, I caught this insane cow! Best thing about that, she won't know that's what you're saying. You can literally sign to her, Oh, I really like you, have you seen Coronation Street? Meanwhile, you're just describing it to the other people in a long string of slurs, like the best of both worlds. You can talk behind their back, in front of their face. Genius. Now, Echo has obviously destroyed her leg, so she went to a guy who owns a pawn shop so that he can make her another leg. I wish I was joking. Oh, he's a mechanical genius. That's why he's the owner of a pawn shop that gets next to no business in the middle of nowhere. Because he's such an engineering god. Caught in something. Do you think you can fix it? It got destroyed by a train. Then it turns out she's drawn up plans for a replacement leg and wants him to make it for her. Who needs billions in research and development funds to create the next generation of cybernetic leg? I just, just thought of something on me phone. Can you make it, uncle? Especially when you see the tools he's working with. Where's my uh, slip joint uh, pliers? Calm down there, mate. I'm not sure I can understand your advanced technology. Especially when he starts to make a new leg out of things like a used bike. And she replies to the bloke, They hit me, I hit back. Nobody hit you, you silly cow. You've literally turned up in this series and blew up something for absolutely no reason. The guy you spoke to in the first episode even said, I don't want to start a war. And you're like, I I'll start one anyway, and then blame them for it. Although, I, I do want to draw your attention to her magnificent acting ability. Oh. I can see why she got the part. It was because she was deaf, American, can sign and has one leg. That, that's why she got the part. So we get a montage. We're gonna need a montage. Of him building her leg out of sponges. And a lampshade. I really do wish I was joking. Congratulations, me! I've just made a pile of trash into a single piece of trash! I mean, look at that mess. Tony Stark, he ain't. But of course, she's as grateful as you would expect from a psychotic murderer. He goes, don't you run off with it! I couldn't run with this, even if I wanted to. Give it me back then, you ungrateful cretin. When you lose your other leg, we'll put you on wheels instead. They're easier to build. At that moment, she sees a statue. She's like, oh, this is the lunatic I've been seeing in my mental delusions. That's a Chata Chaffa. That's the first Choctaw. The one who saved everyone from a cave by stealing magical powers from the liquid that then destroyed paradise and subjected her entire tribe to a life of hell on earth. That one. Yeah, that's the one. She bit into the apple. Turned into human beings. <laughs> Is that the sign for human beings? I can't possibly imagine what that refers to. Oh, I've got a nice pair of human beings on me. Look at the human beings on her. People will bear fortune to get a pair of fake human beings. So he gives her basically a law dump about how the ancestors will come and help people. Ancestors would do. Watch out for a family in times of need. Yeah, left it a little bit late with you though, didn't they, love? Don't you think the ancestors could have come and looked after us when we were getting into a car that was going to kill my mum and cost me my leg? Would have been nice for them to appear then, wouldn't it? Oh, we're looking out for you. Except when you're a child, because we want you to live through a life of pain and misery. You can never predict when they might come calling. They'll help you, but only you can live another day to cope with your misery. <laughs> they, they won't help prevent the misery, just let you wallow in it. Then he's like, oh, go and ask your grandmother. Yeah, ask the next quest giver what to do. Look, all I'm saying is she definitely doesn't eat beetroot before the bloke comes back and we see the destroyed car. I hope she's worth it, mate, because she didn't even touch it. So generous to that boy. I was hoping if I went off-road, I'd at least be able to get my end away. PlayStation 4, that's right, I'm selling my baby. Instead, he's got to sell everything that means anything to him to pay for the damage that he caused because she told him to go off-road for no reason so she didn't die. Also, she could rope him into murdering a load of innocent people that he didn't even know anything about and didn't consent to. Congratulations, you're a murderer, and now you've got to sell your life savings. Hooray! Nice group of people you've surrounded yourself with, mate. Pokey's gonna kill me. I love you, man. You really messed up. Yeah, you should have known better than to do what she said. You need a montage. 
Jesus. So of course, he turns up to meet Echo like, you're trying to get my entire family killed. I expected you to be here a while ago. I can't believe you're wasting my important time. You do realize it's going to take me five hours to walk down that road. And obviously, this scene is packed with emotion. Oh, you can feel the tension. You can cut it with a knife. I'm eating a Pop-Tart. Because he is the sensible person in this. You're starting a war. I don't want a war around my family. Piss off and leave us alone. There's already a war, because I've just started one. But it's not my fault. I'm just a psychotic evil murderer. And all of this would carry a lot more weight if you were talking. Maybe next time, hire an actor who can speak. Just a thought. Finally puts the nail in a coffin by going, you sound like Fisk. I honestly don't know how they came up with the sign language for Fisk. What's the sign for Dave? I must know. So are you with me or against me? Only the Sith deal in absolutes? Drives off after that emotional scene which had all of the impact of a dead rat. And remember when she said it's important that we are inclusive. This is the acting ability of somebody who is included and wouldn't have been otherwise. Her ancestors can give her any ability in the world except how to have an expression on her face and make a sandwich or have kids, a husband and a fulfilling life. Why did this thing exist? I went on a train and stuffed her over a bloke who thought he was my friend but I just thought he was a useful simp. She goes out and murders people for absolutely no reason whatsoever and somehow has the ability to break a train. Whereas at this point, a train is the only thing that could make this show entertaining. <laughs> in the late 1800s, Indian country was infested with dangerous criminals. That's no way to talk about the Choctaw. That seems incredibly offensive. Tribes establish their own police force to bring these criminals to justice. Hopefully they do the same with Echo. These tribal police were called the Light Horsemen. In fact, this was so long ago, we hadn't yet invented the gap between words. Oh look, it's the cowboys. Sorry, sorry. I mean the Indians, the indigenous, the Native Americans. Could you stop changing names, please? It's really confusing to the rest of the world. <laughs> Bang! We could have had audio, but instead, instead we wanted you to know true misery. <laughs> Why didn't you say bang for that one? Yeah, there's a bloke there. A stunning, brave example of masculinity. Ah, we got you! It's actually her ovaries doing the firing. Her father was a lice horseman, but she had the power of fallopian tubes. He gave her a stick that he barely carved. Oh, thank you. Now I've got a stick. <laughs> Very light stick can now break other extremely fragile twigs. Yay! Now that's some empowerment for you. Crack! We had to put the sound effect after the image. It's either a sound effect or Davina McCall's about to make an appearance, I'm not sure. The time is right, I want to join you. No, we need you to give birth to the people of this tribe. We can't have you going out and hunting people and bringing people to justice. Not only are you extremely ill-equipped for it and you die, but we also need you to pop out sprogs. But her, she's too thick to understand basic reality. To give life means nothing if I cannot protect it. I'm like, I'm like what? You've just called your own baby worthless. That's what a husband's for, love. He protects it. You create it. Looks like his real response is, you're too thick to do anything in life. We thought we were lucky and our village didn't have an idiot, but it turns out we've discovered one after all. Why don't you come back once you've grown up and learn about basic biology? So she decides to prove her masculinity by braiding her own hair. Like I said, we found the village idiot. Yes, braid your long hair that's down to your ass, and you shall be a man, my son. And so the brave, powerful, strong men folk go to handle the evil bandits. These are the criminals we've been looking for. It's a trap. It's a trap. Bang. Just in case you don't know what a gun sounds like. Again, so all the men are dying because the evil English people of civilization have come to improve the local area. But her having not followed the men folk, she can sense danger. Oh look, it's a chocolate swirl. I've seen a tree person and I can suddenly play really awful sports. <laughs> And so with that, she sprints across the entire forest, despite the fact that she was nowhere near them, and they were already engaged in a fight to save the day. All those men folk, they've got dangly bits in front of them swinging around. It's throwing their center of balance off kilter. No wonder they can't aim with those absolutely massive balls. Her, she doesn't have any problems with that. She doesn't even have a pair of humans. She takes out one. <laughs> with her stance that makes her look as if she's about to fall off that rock at any second, the recoil would just make her go, ah! I don't know, mate, you could actually shoot at them instead of going, wah, 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 like Xena the warrior princess. I mean, she had way nicer humans than you do, mate. 
Yeah, she shows those pesky menfolk what you can do. Through the power of the sisterhood, our combined power is greater than any single woman. We can almost reverse park. <laughs> Yay! I'm a murderer! Now I can have babies! <laughs> Just what everyone wants in a nurturing caregiver. Brutal violence. <laughs> you know, I could have babies, but what I really want to do is murder people. <laughs> Marvel, creating the next generation of Disney princesses. Yes, okay. Mate, even I'm gonna need sign language for whatever she just said. How do you subtitle the rest of the episode, but not whatever that was? Yes, okay. Your Kolki? Your Kolki Kolkin? I don't know. But they have a long, pointless discussion about literally nothing, just going, Oh, Maya's back! I'm like, I know. I've been watching the pissing episode! Why don't you just swallow your pride before you lose your granddaughter, too? I can't swallow my pride. Do you know my ancestors used to brutally murder people? So that I could be a mother, but instead, I'd just rather hunt for blood! <laughs> yeah, I got nothing to say. I, I wish that was the case. This scene wouldn't have lasted forever. But Maya's walking past a lake. Oh, maybe there's someone behind me. Oh no, I'm just delusional and hallucinating. Maybe that wound is still affecting me. I should probably not stuck dental floss in it. After that, we get a montage. Montage. <laughs> a montage. And then, and remember that these ancestors are supposed to be helping her. There's danger. <laughs> And she gets grabbed from behind and chloroformed. Have you ever considered not sending the visions when she needs to be alert? Hello, Echo. I'm here to tell you you're in danger. When? Now, actually. He's he, he's already got you. Sorry, I distracted you. Maybe I should have just sent a text. We now join Echo upside down, which means all the blood is going to run to her head. If anything, her brain having oxygen for once might increase her IQ by about five points for a total of five. Now, for some reason, they hung her up from that ceiling. I don't even know how they got her up there. She's at least three times the weight they are. So she wiggles. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't do a very good job of tying her up, did they? For some reason, they attached one of her ropes to a fake leg. Now, I've not kidnapped that many people, but if I was going to restrain one of them, I wouldn't restrain them by a very easily detachable part of them. What follows next is incredibly tense. Sorry, did I say tense? I mean, they've cut the audio, and so it's not tense at all, because removing the most important thing from a TV series entirely destroys the experience! I don't need to hear a heartbeat. I've already got one. I mean, at least that's based. What do you want on your sandwich? Just shut up, both of you. Make whatever you want, I'll decide which is the best later. The really stupid thing is they've tied up her dad. I think it's her dad. I don't really care. They could have just kidnapped her, taken her somewhere else, and not revealed himself to have betrayed that bloke, but for some reason, we've got to have him as well? I don't know. So this one picks up her foot and looks at it as if, oh, I didn't know what this was. I've never seen a person whose foot drops off before. Shouldn't have come that much of a surprise to you, love. You did hang her up from the ceiling. Why don't you use got a babysitter? Or you could. Uh, again, if you're gonna kidnap somebody who can fight, maybe don't just have some random woman standing around guarding them. What's she gonna do? Oh no, you've escaped from your handcuffs. Would you like an astrology reading? Taurus has just risen in Saturn. You're gonna have a shocking surprise today. Bang! I gotta be out front when he gets here. I'm the man on the inside. You're not the man on the inside. You're only on the inside when you haven't outed yourself to the guy who owns the place. I think the gagging him gave you away at this point. So she walks in, goes I'll babysit her, and does the most stupid thing imaginable gives her a pissing shoe back. All I'm saying is if you kidnapped an amputee, they're gonna find it a lot more difficult to escape without a leg. So this woman arrives at the skate rink and the guy does something incredibly stupid. Well? Mm. He's like, yeah, I want you to die. Let me alert you to my presence so they shoot you in the face. Clearly doesn't care about her at all. So Bonnie walks in and despite the fact that he was trying to alert her to the fact he was gagged before, he's now like, oh, um, uh, yeah, I'm actually on their side now. I'm gonna try and get you away because otherwise they'll shoot you in the face. I just hadn't thought about that two seconds ago, apparently, but now I've entirely changed changed my character motivation because I'm really well written. Meanwhile, he's signing at her at his hip. You've got to leave. He's like, oh, but I was just hoping I could eat an entire plate of donuts. Now, at this point, you'd think her ancestors would just look after her, right? They'd be like, oh, you've got all these magical powers. Just go and kick some ass. Instead, she decides to uh, use a walkie-talkie. Dispatch the super jump scare. Oh yeah, they caught her. How did they manage to teleport outside and catch up with her without her seeing them? We'll never know. Because the writers didn't think about it. <coughs> Let's just say the ancestors did it and have done. Maybe the blokes have their own ancestors that help them. And so Echo does something which is mainly surprising because she didn't do it before. The foot with a blade in the end of it. Really glad we gave the amputee back her leg now, aren't we? Literally the easiest person to detain. 
So Bonnie starts yelling at her. I think she's yelling at her. She's just wiggling her fingers for a bit. As such, there's no emotional tension in the scene again. So at this point, I'm just projecting my own emotion onto the scene and the desperate hope to make this interesting for at least a microsecond. Are you in town? You can't even look me in the eye. She doesn't know what you're saying unless she looks at your hands. How do you expect her to look you in the eye and read what you're saying? If you want her to look at you when you're talking, you need to actually speak so she can read your lips rather than down here. Oh, my human beings. So this is basically just whining. Oh, you never talk to me. No one cares. We've literally just met this person. Why would anyone care about her? And obviously, all the time she's getting screamed at by this sister, who's like, ah, you've betrayed me for years. You can just see the incredible emotional range from the main actress here. I have let my sister down. She is angry and upset with everything I've done. You can just see the broad range of emotive depth on her face. She doesn't need words to get that across. So they walk in with somebody else who doesn't eat beets, gun pointed as if they're out to blow her face off. None of them wonder, why are you standing Standing up now when we tied your shoes and hands together. How are you even standing up when we tied you up before in a different way? They start interrogating Bonnie. But no one can tell. It's all right. A script is overrated anyway in a TV show. And when he drops his phone, Echo picks it up and we get, quite possibly, the most ill thought out line they could have said. Her zip ties told you I heard something. What? Her zip ties? I told you I heard something. How loud do you think cutting a zip tie is? If you think you can hear it from another room. What are you, daredevil yourself? Echo can't hear, but somehow you sucked all that up yourself, did you? I've got the hearing power of 20 people from my ancestors. Whoa, 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 don't shoot her. Yeah, to be fair, killing Frisk's daughter probably isn't the best plan. Guns down. I can talk to her. I mean, I could talk to her. It's not my fault she wouldn't understand it. But just to prove that no good deed goes unpunished, what do we do? Her? What a lunatic. I'm just gonna punch my own sister. Or you could just take two steps forward and punch the other people. What was that? For some reason, the woman starts trying to catch the phone, but rather than just kicking her, she turns her back on her for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And then we get this. What? Why did we turn around to try and raise our leg backwards, which is far harder than just kicking forwards, love? I don't know. But they just walk out the room, locking her in there because, you know, she was too thick to walk towards the door herself. And Echo's like, oh, I found a wheel. That'll come in handy when my other leg gets stuck in a train. So then Echo turns into Mac MacGyver. And we get a montage. Little improvement to show it all would take too long. We're strapping all bits to it. And making what looks like our own little homemade crossbow. In a montage. Oh, and somewhere she got a laser sight on it as well. And a torch. I used to build cars out of rocks and trees. So she's trying to shoot out the light. I mean, it's probably not the worst thing she's had over her face. Except she then decides to walk into the locked room that the woman can't escape from. Yeah, now I'm going to take revenge and eat you. I could do with the calories. Where are you at? What is this, a horror film? Is there anybody there, Mr. Ghost? Although I have to say, she does get what she deserves. What the <laughs> Yeah, she gets hit with lots of little tiny wheels and then kicked in the face. You probably didn't need to be that forceful about it. Just leave it lying around. She'll definitely eat it at some point. I think he wants to go out. So take him out. Now, this guy's angry because he did it for a bounty, and he's like, yeah, we're not going to give you a bounty, we're just going to shoot you. Never made sense to me in movies this. If you're criminals that rely on people to give you tips for your bounties, you're going to have to pay them, because if you just shoot everybody you do business with, no one will do business with you. You can't run a criminal empire if nobody does business with you, because you've shot all of them. And like, where is Maya Lopez? As the lights turn red, the music kicks in. And we're like, yeah, I'm deaf, so I'm going to play really loud music at all of you. Well, it's good to know this place had dodgy electrics. This is our land. We'll pay cheap electricians if we want to. So then we get really stupid stuff, like when he reaches for his gun. Your fake leg gently touched on my hand for a bit. I find it really difficult to believe you can apply that much pressure to him, especially when all he has to do is grab your foot with his other hand and pull. There's no way you're keeping your balance with that one. That's right, she is gently tapping his head into a wall. Oh, thank you. You've given me a slight bruise. <laughs> Look, love, I know you've been eating a lot of pretzels recently. There's no way you applied that much force to him. But she goes around taking them one by one. It's all done very quickly in very fast takes like that because um, the only way they could make it believable in the loosest possible sense. Like the idea that her kicking him could break a brick wall. 
when you see how that was done, it looks really stupid compared to the trailer. <laughs> but now she's against a whole horde of them in open territory. My ancestors, the power of the sisterhood, I can aim. It's a shame she couldn't aim before though when she's shooting Kingpin at point blank range into his face. <laughs> I don't know why he just raised his gun and stood there. That's right, we cut the audio just so we can remove all the tension from the scene again. Oh, we're in mid-fight, let's ruin everything. So she goes around taking them all out. Obviously, she can beat them all up and all the men are cowering in fear because, oh no, the fallopian tubes are after me. <laughs> that's right, I'm supposed to believe that's possible. Also, I don't know if you noticed. <laughs> Jump cut. Jump cut. It's okay if I jump cut things. I'm making a video in my front room. You've got tens or hundreds of millions of dollars to make this. Reshoot it rather than just have the people literally teleporting. <laughs> jump cut. At least in the Daredevil fight, you tried to hide the jump cuts by putting the camera into something and then pulling it out again. In this, they're literally teleporting in front of your eyes. So after one of the most unbelievable fights I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> She even turns into Indiana Jones for a bit. I mean, quite frankly, it's farcical. Which one of your ancestors allowed you to do that with one leg? Until the bad guy finally takes her sister. Yes, is she gonna get what she deserves? Remember, we started this episode by going, we bring justice to criminals who deserve it. Like Echo, the psychopath. Personally, I would have just ended the series here. And you're all dead, folks. Uh, the good guys relatively to Echo, win again. Instead, the head guy gets a phone call. Let's go. Yeah, bit anticlimactic really, isn't it? So we build it up to a crescendo just so they could get what they, what, what do you mean it's over? Would you, would, why the, the walk, what? Talk about pointless. You could have broken something. Broken something? They're about to shoot you in the face. And you're not like Kingpin with an impenetrable brain. You just have a big vacuum in there. Well, it'll definitely travel through. Or the part where we Almost die. This guy again goes back to his really annoying cadence of talking because he's trying to catch up to the subtitles. Or the part where we almost die. I don't know, but you will be exterminated. I, it, it just speaks like the Daleks. I can't get it out of my head. Because there's a price on your head. Because there's a price on your head, Daleks. So her engineering master brings her her new leg, which is carbon fiber. I'm hoping he fixed the old one rather than made carbon fiber himself. You uh, won't go see her. He also has the incredibly annoying cadence of talking. Her heart was broken when you left. My brain is breaking the longer she stays. And he's like, oh, I got you a little decoration. Now you're made of bronze. We'll get a load of people singing. <laughs> I wish I was joking. Face like a slapped ass. But then, as she arrives home, dun dun dun, it's Kingpin. It's a shame the ancestors didn't warn you about that one, love. Or distract you so he could have taken advantage. Either one would have worked for me. Welcome to her acting range. Well, I'm impressed. Episode four and the trailer footage now. She walks randomly up to an ice cream vendor. No. And starts start waving her fingers at him. How on earth is he supposed to understand you? You are definitely old enough by this point to understand that nobody understands you. So she's just like, Ugh. Which one? Use your words. Lord, love, I don't understand you. Stop waving your hands around. Maybe some people think he's being unreasonable, but by the time you got to episode four of this show, I fully understand his frustration. So he's just like, use your words. He's not insulting her, having a go. He's just like, I don't get you, love. Kingpin just loses his mind. I've absolutely no reason why. He's like, I've got to go and do something. I can't believe that man didn't understand you, even though I can't sign either. If anyone should understand what it's like not knowing sign language, it's him. So he goes around and beats crap out of him. <laughs> Which Echo then sees. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just raspberry sauce. Oh yeah, she does run over and start kicking him as well. Like I say, she's an evil psychopath. Deserves everything she gets. She's been an evil psychopath since she was a kid. We get a whole scene and it's like, your training's finished and now you've learned your final lesson that you can only ever trust me. You're dismissed. I wish I was. The fact that she can leave the room makes her the luckiest person in that scene. Please just let me go. No! I mean, yeah, they did knock her out around the corner, but let's face it, it's kind of a lucky escape. I still feel jealous. Not having to spend any more time around Echo, you know, it's a toss up. Now I know she shot him in the head, but if he's trying to uh, let bygones be bygones and make friends with her again, I'm not sure this is the best strategy. 
for goons to grab her from behind. Although I am a little bit surprised she didn't just beat the crap out of all of them. But it turns out it's all for a gift. He's given her a contact lens so that when people talk, she can see sign language. Personally, I would have shot her in the head back, not give her a Christmas present. I thought it was important that we could communicate with no go-between. I wish you'd applied that logic to the show. Then I wouldn't have to spend half my time reading the screen because you've caught the audio. We could have a Sunday family dinner. That's just what I want from Kingpin. A picnic. I'm not angry with you, Maya. Pissing should be. She shot you in the face. The fact she's too incompetent to do it properly isn't a redeeming feature. Just like I taught you. And I was impressed. I was so impressed that you missed me from a one foot away. She's supposed to be a trained assassin. Mind you, he thinks she's his daughter. She did get into the position by affirmative action. After that, I think we're all expecting incompetence. I think there's a part of you happy that I'm still alive. It's my trigger finger, so I can try again. And she says, no, I can assure you I wanted you dead. Oh, but your face, it told another story. What? Her face? only ever tells the same story. We have literally one expression for the entire series. Told another story just now when you saw me. Relief. Well, can someone tell her face, please? Because it hasn't realized. And then we get really bizarre. I thought you saw my actions as heroic. I used to. Do you remember when you beat up that innocent ice cream van who did absolutely nothing? All because I'm too lazy and can't be bothered to read lips or learn how to talk. I expect everybody in the world to sign, but I can't read lips. But she tells him she'll open the wine and pours it down the sink. I'm not really sure why. At first, you're like, oh, maybe she thinks he's put something in it. But then later on, she eats the food he's provided for her. So she clearly trusts him. Instead, she serves him a Coke. Only the highbrow picnic he was hoping for. What happened to the Lafette? I poured it down the drain. Why, though? Okay, highly recommend it. He doesn't even ask why. Kids, what are they like, eh? Always pouring wine down the drain. And so it gets down to business of why he's here. You want an empire. You'll have it. He's applying to the only personality trait she has. A bloodthirsty thirst for power. He's like, look, I'll give you an empire. I'll give you my empire. Just leave this place and come back to New York. I mean, it's covered in rats. It's a really, really attractive proposition. Until then, I'm at the Choctaw Casino. Oh, I'm surprised you went there, Disney. Mind you, if CBR are going to say that Echo is a wonderful representation of Choctaw culture, then who am I to judge your bigoted stereotypes? We all know stereotypes exist for a reason, because it happens often enough that people recognize it as a pattern. I just wasn't expecting Disney and CBR to agree. She's going to scalp him now. Let's get a hat trick. <laughs> I also like this one for the Radio Times. How authentic is Echo's disability representation? Well, I don't know, mate, but she's got magic powers through time and can beat up 15 different men with only one leg. All I'm saying, probably not that authentic. <laughs> In fact, the entire show comes across as if you're just taking the piss. What else can we do to humiliate them? I know. Give her a contact lens that translates speech into sign language rather than just words. She only knows sign language. No one would expect her to read. So after going, it's been a long time since we've had one of these meals and then not eaten anything he leaves guess it's gonna be a lot longer before he has one of those meals he only seems to have brought cookies by the way wait you had dinner oh i can't believe you had dinner i only consume calories by feeding them directly into my belly button i mean why did you have to say it like that mate wait you had dinner he's handing me queen pin <laughs> He's like, look, I know you're evil. You can take over my empire. He's like, do you know why I'm 45 and alone? Crippling depression after appearing in Echo? I I'd love to know. So he does a whole speech. Oh, I tried to get out, but Fist told me he'd kill people, so I just stayed in. And he says, I want better for you. I don't want you to live the life that I've had to suffer through. And her response is this. You say you're concerned about me, but you left me in New York alone. You insufferable cow! A guy's literally pouring his heart out to her. I want you to have a better life. And you're going, ah, you're just an asshole. No, you're the evil psychopathic lunatic. And I was not okay. I could have come back here where you did at any time. And I decided to stay there of my own free will. Joined a crime boss and started murdering people because I'm an evil psychopath. But it's all your fault. I'm sorry. Why are you sorry? It's all her fault. I'm sorry that you're an evil cow. So he keeps apologizing, even though her entire life is her fault. And we see a powwow. I don't know what a powwow is. As long as people don't get a haircut while they're there, I think they'll be fine. It just looks like a place where people put up empty stalls. <laughs> But then the grand starts to hallucinate, which given a view, I can understand. I wouldn't want to be looking at that either. She sees back in time her ancestors. And then Echo collapses as well. Like, oh, maybe aneurysms run in the family. After this, we get some dramatic music. 
this is important. She's still asleep because she got overwhelmed. Oh, he told me I wasn't responsible for my own actions and my life's all his fault. And I just couldn't help all the positive emotion the lack of accountability gave me. And it turns out he's brought her to granny. Go on now. Just piss off out my car, love. I don't want you here anymore. Then we get a super long and pointless conversation. As always, Alakwa acting out of her face. You can absolutely feel the emotion resonating from her blank expression. Looks like she just stepped in something on the street. Be a good face for a Terminator as they're psychopathic murdering robots as well. <laughs> so Echo tells her that I've been having visions of the past and weird things have been happening. I've got glowing hands. And she's like, oh, I saw the same things when I gave birth. I was going to die, but they took me into a forest and put water on my stomach. Not even joking. And I saw a cave as she stole magical powers and destroyed paradise. And then gave birth against a tree for some reason? I don't know. I'm not sure the best thing can experience the moment it's born is a two foot drop onto the ground. <laughs> This is Dave. This is Dave. Ignore the fractured skull. And he goes, you know, your mom, she had the power to heal people. Shame she didn't use that in the car accident, really, isn't it? If anything, it would have made even more sense that she paid attention because if someone else crashed and not her, she could have saved their life. Really should have been watching the road rather than her daughter signing at her, shouldn't she? And she's like, oh, when I saw you, you just reminded me of her. You were so similar. Your mom had the brain of a five-year-old as well. Generations echoing through time. They're speaking to you in your time of need. Except when you had your leg cut off. They didn't care about you then. All that time you're out there rampantly murdering people, they didn't care about you then either. But now, now you're here to murder people by a casino. Now they're interested. So Echo gets told, they, they're watching over you in your time of need, and Echo reacts as only a lunatic would. I was a child! I needed you! <laughs> You've literally got told that your ancestors are giving you magical powers, and you're like, yeah! your fault! You're an insufferable cow! You chose yourself! Ugh. Mate, I would choose a dog with three legs over you. I'm trying to work out if there's anything I wouldn't choose over Echo. <laughs> Maybe a ruptured spleen might just edge it. How'd that go? I don't know, it was exhausting! Yes, everybody is tired when they see you coming. Oh no, not again. Daredevil's the luckiest person in the series because he can't hear you speak. And then she goes back to a sewing room where she's been working on Echo's superhero dress, which is just made out of random bits of fabric. Now that'll come in really useful when she gets shot. He goes to fix his car, I'm not joking. This is a storyline. The guy asks him, so what are you looking for to fix your car? You know what you're looking for? I'll know when I find it. That works if you're walking off into the distance to try and find something about your own personality and life. I just want to be happy. If you're after a carburetor, it doesn't really do you any good, though. My bumper's broken. I don't know what a bumper looks like, but I'll know when I find it. An echo goes to the casino, pulls out her handgun, walks in with it drawn, and Kingpin says, I suspect you've come to kill me. And what gives you that idea, mate? What is it about this scene that could possibly have tipped you off? He must have inherited super intellect from his ancestors as well. Again. He's got a point there, though, doesn't he? Actually, this time, she's further away. She'll definitely miss. He just spills a story about his childhood. Oh, I had to kill my father because he was beating my mom. And I did it with this hammer. Here, take this hammer and do it to me. Free yourself. I mean me. Free yourself. Go ahead. Free me. Can we work out whether she's freeing herself or freeing you? I, I really don't know. Also, look at the size difference. Are we sure she can reach? And we know what her aim's like. What if she misses? And she's like, no, I can't be bothered, actually. You're not even worth the effort. I've killed loads of people for no reason before, but you're a step too far. Despite the fact I've already shot you in the head the last time I saw you, this time I don't want to kill you anymore for a reason that we haven't worked out yet. We've come full circle. Well, I think going around in a circle is inevitable when you've only got one leg, isn't it? Like, you're naturally going to lean the other way. You just got to hop. Hope centrifugal force can keep you standing. I just get the sudden urge to play the lorry reversing noise. <laughs> and it ends with her riding along on a bike, and he's like, Oh, sorry, Mr. Fisk, we lost it. We were tailing her, but she's gone. I'm like, how? She was on a motorbike on a straight road. You've got to be the worst trackers around. How does someone with one leg get away from you? She can't even hear you coming. And as we enter episode five, we get treated to some delightful music. <laughs> I can't believe this series isn't more popular. Open the finale now and they start as they mean to go on. Yeah, that's about the quality level. We get a short scene showing us that Echo has been a psychopathic murderer her entire life. So all that twaddle you saw in the last episode of, Oh, it's all your fault. All my life's your fault. No, she's always been a psychotic bint. As she just sees a woodpecker, which she wants to kill with a catapult. 
and succeeds. And after she's gone to make the innocent creature suffer, she goes to her mom and goes, it's hurt, I found it, and it fell from a tree. Now her mom, knowing that she's given birth to pure evil, is like, oh, it didn't just fall, did it? But luckily for you, I'm magic and can heal it. Is that why she had the magic powers in the first place? Was the mom supposed to live and grow old so that she could resurrect all of the people that Echo murders? Her ancestors are like, I know you've given birth to filth. Luckily, we'll give you the cure to her evil. Unfortunately, she got hit by a car and so now now Echo has made thousands of people suffer around the world. Would have been even more if anyone watched the show. Get an entirely pointless scene of him coming on to his ex, and we find out that Kingpin meets her in order to talk about Echo, but she doesn't know who he is. Now Biscuits, because he's uh, obsessed with her, is texting her like, hey, where are you? Of course, she completely ignores him because she doesn't care about anyone except herself. It's like, Biscuits isn't useful to me now. Bye! She only cares when he tells her that other people have gone missing. Goes home, and this is about as much of an emotion as you'll ever see on her face. Because for some reason, she's hallucinating her mom in her own house. Like, I know you've died, but now you've got a new costume look you can wear. And because of that, I thought I'd come back and haunt you, and give you the power to heal people, which you're never going to use to save any of the people that you brutally murder. So they go back into the car that Echo caused her mom to crash. I don't know why, maybe I want to just remind her of PTSD or something. I will help you, even though I didn't even know what a steering wheel was when I was driving. Your ancestors will help you. You come from a long line of very special women. I couldn't have chosen a better adjective myself. This is somebody who's raised a daughter and not even taught them how to speak. Someone's got a little spray bottle of water and wet the bottom of her eyes. You can tell it's fake because uh, you cry out of your tear ducts. Here. Bit of your eyes doesn't get damp. You don't cry out of this. All the way from Chaffer herself. They carried the fire. They stole the magic that was keeping paradise alive. And when they ate from the evil apple, they got kicked out of paradise. Yeah, we know. She destroyed the world, love. I'm not sure why you keep bragging about it. They were the protectors. They had to protect us because they stole the magic and left everyone else to suffer. They fought for their family and attacked everybody else. Now it's your turn. Go forth and make innocent people suffer like you've done for the rest of your life. All I bring is danger. Have you considered not murdering people, love? And she says, in this costume that looks like it was made by some gran in the back of her house, you will find your gifts. Strategy. Because remember, she picked up a ball off the floor. Cunning. Because she turned up and aimed. Ferocity. Because she stole magic she wasn't allowed and destroyed paradise and got her entire tribe ejected out onto earth to suffer. What a wonderful lady. Love from her mom who couldn't drive. All of that is infused in this mess. <laughs> And she's like, oh, that's the most pretentious pile of twaddle I've ever seen in my life. Making me well up. I still don't have an expression on my face, though. So you can't tell. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, there's no way that's going to fit. There's definitely no way that's going to fit. <laughs> it's even got a hint of hourglass. All right, love, calm down. Echo may not have ears, but I do. Back at the powwow, these two vans turn up with people with guns inside. We get a pointless song. Not just because they cut the audio to the song. Gripping. <laughs> Although after hearing it, I'm quite glad they did it. That scene goes on forever, but Biscuits realizes something's going on. The strange people here with guns, mate. So he phones the only man who can help, because of course you need a man to help. Do you have a gun or a weapon? And he's like, oh, I've got something better than a weapon. I've got ears. <laughs> I got something even better. As it turns out, he doesn't. Echo now wearing something that definitely seems larger than it was on the mannequin. I mean, come on. That's not what was on the mannequin. Well, out comes Kingpin and the hostages. Now, what comes next is very weird because Kingpin gets her sister to sign what he's saying, even though she should have a contact lens, which translates what he says. Very weird. We've just forgotten our own plot. So he's like, I offered you everything. And she's over there signing in the corner. He doesn't even ask her to sign. She just starts doing it. Who betrayed who first? Well, you did shoot him in the head. Head. And he did kill your dad, but that's not necessarily a betrayal. It depends if he deserved it. But he's looking for suspicious people around the powwow. Who could be the leader? Who's gonna cause trouble? And across a crowded room, he spots a white guy in a lawn chair. <laughs> he like, you must be evil, but not as evil as Echo. No pink kingpin screaming, you brought this upon yourself. And at least when she signs, you actually see like expression on her face. It's amazing. It's actually like you can tell the emotion behind the words. Oh, we're all family together. Kingpin is just like, good. I know how much it'll hurt you then when I wipe out all your family. For absolutely no reason whatsoever, really. <laughs> I wanted you to leave my empire. And then you said no, so I just decided to randomly kill everybody. I don't even understand it. This doesn't make any sense. 
Yeah, I will kill the rest of your family. You like? Well, it's, it's not even a family. She's, it's just about the random people outside a fairground. He's gonna wipe out the entire town for some reason. Then he admits it, just like I killed your father. Even though we already knew that he did, because it's literally at the start of the series. I can't believe you didn't cook me a pop tart. I don't know. I just think we should have a bit more of a menacing expression when someone's just gone. Echo. I killed your father. <laughs> Instead of a face that just goes, why is my breakfast late? So they all get the green light to go and just, I don't know, just randomly assault everybody, I suppose. He pulls out an RPG. He kept it on ice for when he needed it in the future. But then... Based economy. I don't think I'm supposed to be on Kingpin's side during all of this, but you know. Echo's on one side. It just means all good people have to be on the other one. It's, but then her ancestors flow through her. She pulls off her cloak, stands up. <laughs> And we synchronize! And she's like, I'm menstruating nitroglycerin. I didn't make that up. That was in a TV show I watched recently. An actual line. I just wish I could remember which episode it was because I can't find the clip. Like, trust me, love. I wouldn't trust you as far as I can defenestrate you and look at you. It wouldn't be very far. <laughs> she's like, oh, I can move my arms to the side and give everybody magical powers. The sisterhood has synchronized. <laughs> We can all steal magical powers and destroy paradise together. Oh yeah, and the granny starts to beat up grown men. Through the power of the sisterhood. <laughs> I just want you to watch that one again. She turns around and hits him so that he hits the other guy. Watch. <laughs> I don't know what first guy thought he was doing. For some reason, she's about to attack him and he doesn't go to punch or anything. He goes, oh no, please don't push my fist into his face. All the time, we've got these nutters banging on drums. Everything is extremely quick cut, as you would expect, because how else are you going to make a granny beating somebody up look reasonable? They don't make it look reasonable, but like as reasonable as possible. Echo literally just knocked two people over with one kick that was nowhere near them. Now she can control the power of wind. You give her a curry, she's unstoppable. And at that moment, just as the guy's about to get out the truck, because they've been sitting there way after they were told, Go now! In comes a monster truck. All I'm saying is his mom probably wouldn't be very pleased that he converted her truck into that. And then Biscuits has um, a bit of a strange plan, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, he crushes them all inside the truck, murdering, like, at least ten guys. Oh no, it's two trucks. Tw about 20 guys. They get squashed. Now Biscuits are just randomly, like they were in the truck. They hadn't done anything yet. He didn't even know that they had, he just went, oh, they look dodgy. So he ran him over. <laughs> okay. Everyone in this place is evil. Got it. So they have the rest of the fight and just randomly beat everyone up in clips of about a third of a second long so you can't see what's going on. He sees Lawn Chair Man. And at this point, Lawn Chair Man's won. He's already aimed. He's got it ready. All he has to do is pull his little trigger finger. And instead, we get this mess. <laughs> He could still fire. He's noticed there's a guy with a gun on it. He could still shoot it, the guy with the rocket and instead... Wait, what? Yeah, what? Why are you not firing at the guy who's about to shoot you? He's a lot more likely to miss if he's got an RPG being fired at his head. That's all I'm saying. He winked. Why are we not shooting him back? And the RPG goes firing off into the sky. And everyone thinks it's fireworks. That's it. It's a really crap firework, by the way. And then we line up and it's like, have you not seen my power? There's a load of dead women behind me feeding me their fallopian tubes. I've got 10 of them now. I'm unstoppable. And so she holds Kingpin back as he's about to attack her and starts to glow. We go inside your mind and find you as a little baby. Because don't you know, men are just inevitably evil because of their upbringings. If only they could have a woman come along and talk to them about their fifis, this would all be so much better. What you really need. And so after she's had a little talk with him about his fifis, he's a changed man. Remember, this is the guy that they literally said was going to be the Thanos of this universe. Thanos got cured because someone talked to him about his fifis. What did you do? Tell you what she didn't do. Act. So he leaves. We find out the mom saved a child from randomly, brutally slaughtering an innocent animal just for her own perverse pleasure. There's a song that goes on forever, and we have a montage. We're gonna need a montage. Oh, look, I'm on a bike. I'm a little kid. We're eating food. There's some random cars and trees. Always fade out in a montage. I'm on a bike again. Oh, look, it's the same thing we keep showing five million times in a series. We're laughing with food. And here arrives the evil murderer at the family party just to make everybody suffer with her very existence. He's like, don't worry, guys. I'm not here to hit you with a catapult today. Maybe tomorrow. Marvel Studios would like to extend our deep gratitude to Americans. We want a what an absolute mess. 
People have been calling Echo an anti-hero. She's not an anti-hero. She's just anti-morality. She's pure evil. And so are the rest of her family who just randomly kill people for no reason whatsoever. All of which are idiots. She cured Thanos by just putting her fingers on his face. And we get magical powers from women that stole magical powers from their tribe, kicked them out of paradise, and then claimed that they were the good guys. All in all, this show has absolutely no idea about what a hero is. There's nothing in regards to accountability, responsibility, or actually moral values. No, she wanted to lead a criminal empire. She thought she'd killed Kingpin and was blowing up his empire in order to take it over. And then when he offered it here, he was like, I don't want it anymore. Now you're offering it me, I don't want it. So they just made him lose the plot for no reason whatsoever. I can see why they wanted to get this all out in one go. They should have cancelled it, but they couldn't because they'd already released the virtue. They couldn't cancel it because of the same things they marketed it over. That this was about a deaf, dumb, stupid, ignorant person with one leg who was American and evil. And in Disney's eyes, that's a great thing, ladies and gentlemen. That means you don't need a story or a plot or anything. You just have them going around talking to other Americans. Well, I like the Americans in my TV series to do something. But for everyone else, there's this show. If you like being bored, have I got the recommendation for you? But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you like the video. Subscribe more videos like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.